The New Hampshire primary is days away, and GBH News' coverage is already underway. Boston Public Radio co-host Jim Browdy and Marjorie Egan join me now from beautiful Manchester, New Hampshire, with what they've been seeing and hearing from the <laughs> campaigns as they head into Election Day. Good to see you both. Thank you for taking the time to be here. Marjorie, you too, Adam. Thanks for having us. When we were up there four years ago, it was a wide-open Democratic primary starring our Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren. There yep. was tons of energy, if I recall correctly. What's the mood like and what's the feel like in the Double Tree Hotel in the center of town right now? And that's well, as even the manager of the Double Tree Hotel said, it's not like it it, it, it was, it, as the manager of the Doubletree told us this morning, it wasn't uh, the same as it was four years ago. I mean, the, the Democrats aren't really here, right? There's no, uh, and and it's basically down to Trump and, and, and Nikki Haley at this point. So it's not as crowded. You see far fewer national outlets up here, a lot of local outlets, uh, you know, New England outlets, but you don't see the big national people like you did four years ago. Yeah, I'm not sure it's just because there's not a race on the Democratic side. There is a Biden write-in campaign against two candidates. It's also all these polls, Adam, you've seen, uh, the vast majority of Americans, and that includes New Hampshireites, are not crazy about the two likely choices, Biden, you know, th another rematch, Biden and Trump. We interviewed reporters today and just average people who said, uh, I'm voting for Trump, but I'm not crazy about him. I'm voting for Haley. I'm not crazy about it. They're on and on like that. So I think it's it's the absence of exciting challenges that have tamped down the excitement a bit. Yeah. I mean, we had a lot of people who texted us that said that they had unenrolled from their party so they could be independents mm -hmm. in New Hampshire so they could vote for a Nikki Haley to prevent a Trump win. We got quite a few texts. That was about the only enthusiasm. That's a very yeah, good point, by about, the way. Yeah. About that. that. People really are, uh, that texted us are we're nervous about Trump. In a year where there are not a ton of subplots that seem to be exciting, that's a pretty interesting one. So as you two know, the Democratic Party mm -hmm tried to give the first in the nation primary to South Carolina this year. Joe Biden wanted to do that. New Hampshire ignored them, said, we've got this codified in state law. We're going to go first like we always do. And now Biden, as you mentioned, is ignoring New Hampshire. He's not on the ballot. He's not campaigning there. Has anyone been telling you that they are worried about the future of the New Hampshire primary as an institution and that this might be the beginning of the end for it? Well, not to be morbid here, beginning of the end wise, but one of our listeners said we should all remember that if Trump wins, that that will be that will be the last this will be the last primary ever, ever in the United States. So that was a little heartening. <laughs> Yeah. Also, you know, we spoke to the head of the AACP for Manchester uh, and we've actually, James McKim, we've had an argument with him both this time and last time about whether or not this is the appropriate first state. And while he defends New Hampshire, he actually thinks a regional primary, including New Hampshire, would be a far better idea. And so do I. So beyond the Trump uh, 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 line of Marjorie's a minute ago. This could be it. Obviously, it's it for the Democrats, but we should be careful. While the Democrats are saying, you know, we're not doing this thing, there is an aggressive campaign led by some people like Maura Healy, Kim Driscoll, Michelle Wu to have a write in for uh, Joe Biden on Tuesday. And there's also the write in, the ceasefire write in, yeah, which several yeah. people have mentioned to us too. Oh, yeah, Marjorie, can you explain that actually? Because I've heard about that as well, but some of our viewers won't be familiar with it. What is this ceasefire write in idea? Well, essentially, it's about the uh, Hamas-Gaza-Israel uh, situation where people are very upset about, I think we're up to 24,000 uh, people in Gaza, mostly women and children are dead, and uh, these people are very upset about this. Some of them are mad at President Biden uh, about uh, not pushing Netanyahu more toward the ceasefire, and they're writing in ceasefire as a way to draw attention to the president about their... Uh, regret about his position at this moment. I wanted to ask each of you, and Jim, you anticipated me going in this direction just a minute ago. I wanted to ask each of you whether you think it does make sense. You're in the belly of the beast right now. Does it make sense for New Hampshire to continue having the first primary in the country, whatever the Democrats push for, whatever they want to happen? Or is it time, you've covered a few of these, I've covered a few of these, is it time to look to a different framework that might represent the country a little more effectively. Jim, you said you like the idea of the Super Tuesday. By the way, we've... You said you like the idea of the Super Tuesday. 
Tuesday. Or yeah. me, I'll try again. Yeah, uh, but, but it, 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 until that happens, it, it, yeah, regional primary or at least a combination of places for a primary. We've been coming here almost 25 years every four years. Yeah. And I think our position is the same. Uh, we're <laughs> hypocrites. We love coming to New Hampshire for the political fun of the thing. It, of course, should not be the first primary state. In terms of uh, diversity, people of color, far lower than the uh, national average. The biggest city we're sitting in right now, 115,000 people. Cambridge has 115 thousand people. So I, I think if, if it was on the merits, which it is not, well, I guess it was for the Democratic Party. If it's on the merits, this isn't a representative state. And the last thing, Adam, you heard by says they love the one-on-one -on -one politicking. And by the way, while Trump isn't doing it, Haley's doing it to a degree, Just, and DeSantis yeah. did to agree before he left the state yesterday, I think for good. Uh, that's not how you govern a country. So I love the idea that you get to shake the hand of every candidate. People don't lead our country by living room conversations. And so I, I think for a, a ton of reasons, uh, this is not the right choice for the first primary. Well, I think you forgot the line about how the candidates would come up here and do everything but change the kitty litter in people's homes. And sometimes they were changing the kitty litter. As you point out, that, that's gone. But, Adam, I'm going to be hypocritical, too. I mean, look, at we have, we're, up, we're up here in New Hampshire. We have this great opportunity to talk to uh, different people from New Hampshire, to talk to different politicians. Tonight we're going to go to a Nikki Haley rally. Tomorrow night we're going to go to a, a Trump, Trump rally. rally. And we hope to see some more of those T-shirts with the bosomy women on the front that are <laughs> – Voting for Donald Trump, that's always a big – the vendors, you know, are always great to interview <laughs> the merchandise. So it's a great opportunity for, you know, for Boston and for Massachusetts and New England, to, obviously, to have this primary here. It is. Uh, but, Jim, your point about how you don't govern the country by going around talking individually to people, I, I think that is an important point to highlight. And I heard the interview you did with, was it James Merrill, the Republican operative who was talking about yes. Mitt yeah. Romney comforting a distraught waitress at the Red Arrow Diner when, when she was expressing mm. dismay about health care and her ability to afford it. It's great to see moments like that, but... They're not what you do as president, and I, I got to think that it's at least possible to have them in other states as well, in other places where people are campaigning. I know prediction is a tricky business, but I would love if either of you are willing to hazard a guess, or both of you would be the ideal, about what's going to happen on Tuesday and whether anything is going to happen that's going to fundamentally change the arc of the presidential race. What do you think? How about you, Marjorie? Well, I'm going to steal uh, some lines from Jennifer Horn, who used to be the chair of the uh, GOP up here in New Hampshire. She's no longer even a Republican because she's very upset about Donald Trump. But her prediction was this, that if Nikki Haley wins or Nikki Haley even comes close, that Donald Trump will say she cheated and it will be the beginning of his claiming everyone has cheated in any race across the country where he does not become uh, the winner. Well, I should say, Adam, I should preface this by saying that uh, four years ago when Joe Biden came in, whatever he came in in New Hampshire, fifth or something, I predicted Nostradamus like dead in the water. He is finished. He should withdraw today. I don't know what happened to that guy, but I don't think it was the correct. Remember, remember we saw we saw Joe Biden and his wife, Jill, at the at the desk where you check of course in. We do, yeah. And we, we felt so sorry. Felt sorry for him, we literally. Felt so sorry for Joe and ago. Jill. Little I, did we know. I have to say, I actually believe that Nikki Haley's going to pull this thing out. And uh, the reason I do is the New Hampshire voters are a contrarian lot. I love contrarianism. And I think after Trump winning by a landslide, an historic landslide in the Iowa caucuses, and the conventional wisdom to which I subscribe being that if Trump wins the, fir the first caucus and the first primary, it is over, I think uh, there's going to be a mini revolt by New Hampshire Republicans and undeclared voters switching. So I'm predicting a narrow Nikki Haley on Tuesday night. I love that take because what better way to flex at a moment when your influence is being called into question than by sending the most dramatic message that you can, right? <laughs> Jim Browdy, Marjorie Egan, thank you both. Thank you Enjoy you your time up there. Thank you. Thank you. We will. Thanks.